Welcome to round two of your talk tennis episode where we get into depth with what the players are using on tour. And this one is going to spotlight the ATP tour. We just wrapped up a WTA trap, which is super fun and insightful. So if you're more interested on what the ladies are swinging on the court, go check that one out. But this episode is going to be more based around what the gentlemen are swinging. Troy is with me. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, Michelle. Yes. And uh, as we mentioned previously, we are recording this in the middle at the end of the U.S. Open. So it's been so much fun to watch a lot of tennis. I struggled to get into the U.S. Open series this year. And so I was like concerned if it was like a me thing. But I spent all Labor Day weekend just like glued to the TV watching tennis. So it's been fun. Yeah, we're pretty much down to the final four in both men's and women's. So it's pretty much getting towards the end of the U.S. Open. But the start of football season as we should. <laughs> Cowboys hat on. Let's go. I'm gonna get so much hate for this. I think yeah, well, <laughs> growing up in, in LA, I never really had a football team, but you know, went to training camp this year and yeah, the Oxnard Cowboys. Let's go, Cowboys. Let's go, Dak. Actually, uh, yeah, CD Elliott might be my fave. He's oh, talk about athletes. CD Lamb. Did I just mess up his name? <laughs> I think you were going for the C.D. Lamb or the Ezekiel Elliott, you know? C.D. Lamb is my fave. Yeah. 88. 88. Yeah, that guy's legit. I'm, I'm a new fan. <laughs> but, hey, you guys, you want me to be a fan of your team. I am not fair-weathered. I will pay up on my bets. I... <laughs> Back to tennis. I know tennis yeah. better. Um, We can't really talk about tennis without bringing up Novak Djokovic right now. Um, and he does have a new cosmetic on his racket. So I wanted to see if you had any insight. Um, I think you probably follow him on Instagram as well, Nate Ferguson, and he's been posting a bunch of pictures of that paint job. So I'm going to lean on you and let's, uh, let's just do a quick little rundown of Djokovic. Yeah. So don't know if head plans on coming out with a, commemorative racket you know if he takes the whole thing or whatever but it's the black and gold you know his speed um endorsing the speed pro and uh, i'm pretty sure based on uh on nate at priority one his his post on his racket it says something about like 311 weeks and counting or something like that yeah i believe it's referring to his his world number one ranking right yeah 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 that's pretty cool and yeah it's been, it's cool. It's definitely caught my eye. The cosmetic looks really nice. And he seems to be a player that's um, actually very particular about his cosmetics. Cause I know at one point there was a cosmetic he didn't like. So it's interesting to see. He likes this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't think he's really used the actual like white paint job really. So he must not have been a fan of the, the predominantly white racket. Right. But I know. He used a lot of the black and gold. This one's kind of black and gold, black and yellow. So it seems like that resonates well with them. And I know we're talking about head, but it, now that I think about it, you know, his first, his first major win was what, like 2009 Australia when he beat Sangha and he was using a black and gold racket from another company, the old uh, K-Blade, K-Blade tour. Maybe there's some magic in the black and gold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, from there, I want to talk about F-A-A, Felix Auger Alessim. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, he's awesome. He can do no wrong in my book right now. So what is F-A-A playing with at the moment? So he endorses the Pure Arrow line of rackets. He has the, the banana yellow cosmetic, so to speak, but he actually uses... Um, a pure aero vs but not the current pure aero vs a, a older version so the the older pure aero vs which actually dates back to like the old um babylon aero storm that was once popular by players like um Dinara safina safina yes was one of the first to kind of make that racket popular and then was used by other players like sock um, at one point and Stevie Johnson when he was Babalot. So yeah, it's sort of that Aerostorm, pure Aero VS, older version, uh, which what's just 
distinct about that racket is it's a pretty thin beam. So it's got like that thinner, more box shaped beam in the hoop, kind of like the old pure control or pure storm rackets, but it has that aerodynamic throat. Okay. So it's a pretty control oriented frame, thinner beam, 16 by 20 pattern. And then for string, he uh, he typically goes full bed of uh, Babylon RPM rough in the yellow color. Which uh, that I feel like we don't see as many players using a rough string or a textured string, but yeah. I mean, it seems to be working. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if anything, I would <clears throat> think you know maybe he'd want to go a little bit more control with his poly, um, just because when we tested the uh, RPM rough, it's. It's got a good amount of pocketing and kind of a lively feel for a poly. And that tends to be pretty common with rough polys. Like the Alu Power Rough is pretty uh, lively, kind of springy for a poly. But mm-hmm. hey, maybe it, it meshes well with that that low powered uh, thinner beam frame that he uses and gives him a little bit more uh, ball pocketing. So, yes. And it's very spin friendly. And he, he hits a pretty darn heavy ball from what I can tell and what I've heard from some of his hitting partners like Djokovic and Federer over the years. And then he's um, an Adidas player and he's one of the ones where I'm a little, I get annoyed when they're wearing shoes that aren't as easily available to the public. Um, But obviously it's working for him. He's in the Soul Court boost, right? Yeah. Soul Court, uh, Adidas Soul Court, basically. Yes. They're Uh, dropping boost from the name moving forward. And there will be some, but not as much availability moving forward. Yeah, because they're pretty much going with like the prime blue or prime green endorsement now on that shoe because of the recycled materials, which is really cool. Um, and supposedly the sole court that he uses and CC Pass has used and team has used. And we were talking about WTA Rebacana. Um, supposedly it's kind of like a pro stock shoe, I guess you could call it, but kind of has like a bounce midsole, maybe some slight tweaks to the outsole. It's probably a pretty comfortable shoe and I, it may be hard to, to just up and leave it. But, uh, yeah, it is a little frustrating because when he first came into Adidas, he first switched over and got sponsorship. He was supposed to be the, the flagship guy for the Ubersonic four. Yeah. And uh, him and some of the other players. And then I know he's bounced around. He's tried the Uber four. Don't know if he's ever tried the new barricade yet, but he's tried a couple different shoe models and uh, they end up, a couple of them have ended up back with the soul court. Yeah. They, they make that shoe too nice for them. I think, (laughs) I don't know. They keep coming back to it. Okay. We were talking about pure arrows, maybe some pure arrow VSs. There's another player who has made a statement at the U S open this year. And you, know, I think everyone is going away and they know his name. What is Carlos Alcaraz swinging? I'm trying my best Alcaraz. to pronounce, yeah. <laughs> pronounce correctly. Um, but Alcaraz, Alcaraz, Alcaraz. Uh, Alcatraz, <laughs> as, as a lot of uh, Brad Gilbert and a lot of us people are calling him. but yeah, he's a fun, fun player to watch rips the ball. And, uh, is using the uh, the current, the newest uh, Pure Aero VS. So not the one Felix is using, the older model, but the current retail, you know, frame mold. Mm-hmm. So you want to get a racket like Alcaraz, get the uh, Pure Aero VS that we sell. And um, yeah, it's a nice frame. I know I really loved it when we tested it. Um, it's got the 1620 pattern still. A little thicker beam, a little more pop than the old Pure Aero VS, the one that Felix uses. Um, but I do love the 98 head size. I like that. It gives you a little more feel, a little more precision, a little more control than the actual like standard pure arrow. I always forget that that racket has a 16 by 20 string pattern too. Yeah. Cause it actually played really spin friendly. Okay. Nice. Um, It played more like most brands, 1619, depending on how they space the strings, but it is a 1620, um, good control, good spin, um, and then I think as far as string goes, he goes with the RPM blast, um, which obviously really popular, lots of control, lots of uh, snapback, really slick, slick coating on that string. Um, pretty popular choice for a lot of Babolat pros. Nice. Okay. Another player who caught my eye early this summer, and I'm a big fan of his hair. <laughs> I sound so materialistic, Okay, but um, also another reason why I'm a big fan of him, um, his coach is 
or was, is, was one of my favorite players. So Lloyd Harris, let's oh, talk okay. a little bit about him. Yes. His coach. And who's, is, the, who's the coach? We could actually, we could talk a little bit about the coaches of the previous players we were just talking about, but um, Xavier Malise. Oh, Malise. Okay. The X-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, him. Prince, yeah. Diab- Prince Diablo. I was going to say, former Prince, or maybe he still uses a Prince. Prince player. Yeah. yeah. Um, dated Jennifer Capriotti for a hot minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah team Ponytail. Yeah. Very, um, I think he's from Belgium, if I'm not mistaken. Super fun to watch. Big personality. Uh, beautiful strokes. And now he's coaching uh, Lloyd Harris. Yeah, I like to call him Sir Lloyd Harris. I just feel like <laughs> that name goes well with the sir in front of it you know <laughs> but now i'm like fact checking myself because i've already had one mistake in this podcast already um but i'm 90 percent sure unless he got fired in the last week that's who's yes he is working with yeah but uh lloyd, lloyd harris yeah he's a fun player to watch plays a big game uh he's a yonex racket user ezo 98 as I mentioned before with the WTA um, podcast, you know, not a hundred percent sure which generation of the E zone 98 that he's actually using, or if it's the current one, but it's an E zone 98, um, 16, 19 pattern, got the four uh, loops in the throat. That's one way you definitely can tell it's the 98, not the hundred, but um, yeah. And then pretty popular setup for a lot of Yonex players, uh, E zone players specifically, but uses Polytor pro for his strings. So Ezo 98 Polytor pro. And then, uh, as far as his gear, other gear, he's what lotto, I believe lotto head to toe, kind of like Berrettini. Yeah. Yeah. Lotto. And he's, um, South African, right? So yes. got some flair, some South African flair. Um, yeah. So Republic I, of South Africa. Yeah. I always am curious how, you know, players get into the deals that they get into lotto, Lotto and Berrettini seem to go hand in hand. Lotto and yeah, well, I mean, uh, what's his name? Um, Kevin Anderson was Lotto for quite a while. So there maybe you go. A, maybe a connection there. Yeah, I know there's been um, some chatter about him following in Anderson's footsteps. So mm-hmm. not a bad person to follow up. I know for a fact I can't pronounce this guy's name, but he just played against Daniel Medvedev. And um, I'm pretty sure he came through all the way from the qualifying of the U.S. Open. Van de Schloop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, it's hard to, It's I think it's Van, I don't know, I'm, I'm sounding it out, but Van de Zanschloop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was the funniest press conference and they, they were asking him and he's he's got like this very dry personality but it's like hilarious and he goes oh you want me to pronounce the whole name just the last name i don't know it was funny yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i wanted to say van de school because yeah it's faster but it looks like it's van de zen zen yeah anyways and he's um he's from netherlands yeah i think he's dutch Dutch, 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 Netherlands, Netherlands. Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, seems uh, like a fun new name and player. So, uh, what, what, what about him? What's he using? Yeah, so he's looks like he's a pure arrow player, um, as far as racket goes, and then as far as string, um, looks like he's got a full bed of a black poly. So, I'm assuming if he's a Babylon sponsored player, probably RPM blast. Okay, yeah. let's talk about some Americans. Um, I'm gonna start with Big Foe. <laughs> big Foe uh, on the come up. <laughs> there's always Big Foe on the come up, but I, I think Big Foe's there now. You know, it's like <laughs> he's I'm sure. He's, I'm sure maybe his ranking isn't quite as high as he would probably like it, but he's there and he's making statements. So, and as always, he is so entertaining to watch. Like he's high-fiving the crowd. He's just kind of like doing his thing, getting the hype. That one match lasted. I mean, like it went well into the night and it was so electric. So talk to me about Francis. Yeah. So he's been a V-Core Pro 97 endorser for a while now, as far as the actual frame underneath. Um, I believe it's an older version, like one of the dual g's or v core tour g so like the orange one or the black and orange one because it it's a 1620 uh pattern so it's a little different pattern than the current v core pro 97s but uh lots of control lots of feel that's kind of like their most uh 
low powered player frame that they make, um, which he takes huge rips at the wall. And uh, for string, he goes uh, Polytor Pro full bed. And uh, he's one of those that it was just like a couple of weeks ago when he was playing the U S open series, warm up events, he was in the old uh, previous generation V core pro 97 paint job, the green with the gold. And mm-hmm. then as soon as U S open started, he was in the new V core pro 97 cosmetic. So he's one of those that probably isn't too, um, you know, superstitious, like, you know, like a Del Potro or whatever. He just went from the other paint job and was like ripping the ball right away. So just give him a racket. He'll yeah. do the rest. Um, he's also a Nike player and he wears the GP turbo, correct? Yes. Uh-huh. Him. Yeah. Him and uh, Osaka are the main ones for the GP, but yeah, uh, yeah, I love that shoe. Yeah. It's so comfortable. And like watching him play, like he's, he puts a lot into every point. So I can see why that would be his shoe of choice. Like you, you really appreciate the rebound and the the cushioning and it's yeah. so bouncy. That's always the word I like to describe as bouncy. Yeah. And he's got like an explosive step, man. He's quick. So. For sure. And kind of interesting. I've noticed that during this U.S. Open, there's been a, a decent amount of players that are still in the old Zoom Zero. Yeah. One of the ones that comes to mind, Sinner. Sinner seems to not want to move on from the Zoom Zero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Amanda was, uh, and then yeah. Mova was one that was sticking to it for a while, even though I think she did try the GP. And um, there, I think there's a couple others out there. Yeah, there's been a couple, but if you guys um, also love the Zoom Zero, the GP Turbo is the replacement for that shoe. And I think most of the play testers like that one a bit better because the fit was a little bit more forgiving. I know. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't as restrictive. Yeah. So good option. I had to do a Christy on on my Zoom Zeros and make a little cut into the upper to, to make them work. So. Yeah, I don't think you're alone. I heard, I think that started trending once you yeah. kind of <laughs> let yeah. people know. You guys think um, you, you think you guys customize rackets, man. <laughs> customizing footwear. Shaving the weight <laughs> off. <laughs> you you think you know, but you have no idea. Um, okay, more Americans. Let's talk about Riley Opelka. Oh, he got in trouble, didn't he? Didn't he, he get got, fined? He got fined. I'm like, where can I get the pink tote bag? So do you know the backstory on like the brand or it was from some museum? It's an artist, right? I don't know exactly. I, I mean, at first, just looking at it, I was thinking like designers, like off-white, you know, or something like that. But it, I, I heard it's from like a museum or an artist at a museum inspired it or made it yeah but basically the problem was the label and the text right the size of it the font I don't know right yeah Yeah. so I mean I don't know how well versed our listeners are into ACP WTA ITF rules but everything that the players wear has to be approved or a certain size um you know so and there's issues with conflicting logos there's issues where where the logo can be all of the above Long story short, I think, is the logo was too big, um, too long, maybe, uh, if we're calling it a logo. I, I'm not even sure. And he got fined $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Um, yeah, the size of the logo on the tote was the issue. Anyways, it's just like I'm thinking, like, I know him and uh, Taylor Fritz are really good buds. And when they when he posted on Instagram that he got fined oh, Taylor Fritz was like, I just broke a racket over my knee last night and I didn't get fined and you're getting fined $10,000 for a pink bag. And then I'm also thinking like, it was kind of a cool story with, which another guy we can talk about in a minute. Uh, The, uh, the Danish player, the young Dane, uh, Holger Rune. Yes. uh, Who came on the court with his Babolat bag. And then his accessory bag was like a reusable blue bag from Ikea. (laughs) You know, I was like, okay, you can use the Ikea bag, you know, whatever but not the pink one. Well, and I love that too, because like you're using your platform. I mean, Riley, I don't think, I think he just thought it was a cool bag. And he's like, I'm going to use yeah. it, but also like promote someone, someone else. It's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. The comment section in his post was hilarious. You, yeah. Like the, uh, the Taylor comment was funny, but then you saw a lot of players like <laughs> chiming in and like, where can I get it? I think Venus did like a whole post on it. Yeah. It was funny. Um, but Wait, aside for, from the pink tote. <laughs> for Opelka's uh, racket, he endorses the pro staff line. 
he's one of those that is still using an old cosmetic him and batista agut are still using the black and white tuxedo uh pro staff 97 countervail or whatever the black and white paint job uh but he is actually um using a, a 6195 racket so he's one of those Wilson pro stock players racket that i loved for years uh 6195 and i believe he actually uses the 1618 uh more open string pattern and uh as far as string goes, I believe he's a uh, Alu Power Rough in the full bed. Alu Power, Alu, Alu Power Rough in the full bed, and uh, supposedly strings it pretty loose too. Which I mean, that's a pretty control oriented frame. So yeah, but he's a big boy. He can hit. I mean, like he can hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. But, but yeah, like, I mean, like if you compare to me, I think it's great that he still uses a, a pretty control oriented frame because, like, one argument I've had, like, I mean, a similar type of player, Isner, for example. Uh, with Prince using the Beast or the Warrior 100, whatever 100 square inch thick beam racket, you know, it's like I've always had that argument. Like, why does he need such a more such a powerful racket, you know? And I think Fritz is more on track, even though 95 is kind of like a dying breed, and most people are going up a little bit in head size. That racket's such a nice racket, such good control, um, and you can get away with stringing it loose because the frame has so much control and feel. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, Riley's. Also, Fila, I was going to say he was New Balance and now he was Fila. for a long was, time and was, then went to now. Fila, wasn't necessarily loving the footwear, I guess. So he was still using New Balance shoes. But I think in the last month or so, he's actually been rocking some Fila footwear. So, yeah. And from what I've hear, heard, Fila does a good job of making sure that their players are in shoes that fit them really well. And it seems some of the bigger, taller players, um, I know, sometimes struggle with shoes that fit their feet well. So makes sense. This would be a good match. And he's rocking that. He'd rock that tie-dye uh, Fila gear really well. Another American that uh, we can talk about. There's actually two that come to mind. One okay. is a little bit of a veteran now and one is new to the scene so we'll start with the older one first jack sock he did okay this year Ooh. at the u.s open and talk about um endorsing maybe some older babylon rackets i think he might tell me what he's got yeah jack sock jay sizzle my boy um <laughs> yeah he's a. Uh, he is like uh felix he is a pure arrow endorser has the pure arrow cosmetic although he does get the american flag paint job quite a bit yes um but he actually uses the old pure arrow vs or actually for him probably going back to like the old Aerostorm storm gt or whatever he came up on the scene kind of using that old arrow storm so okay he endorses that lots of control from that frame 1620 pattern and then as far as string goes he's bounced around over the years with different polys the last one i thought i saw by a tournament stringer that strung his rackets was like alu power rough and like uh, riley he was stringing like actually pretty low like maybe lower like around the tension that nisha Corey strings at like four close to that 40 pound range sometimes even in the upper 30s or something like that so that's crazy yeah Okay, well, let's talk about this new player who burst on scene this summer. He had a solid, he's had a solid year. He, uh, you know, lots of chatter about him. Um, Jensen Brooksby. 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 The California kid. Yes, he's from Sacramento. And I don't want to misspeak, but I know he had gone to college, but I'm pretty sure he took a redshirt year or either an injury year, but also... You know, we all know college was um, college athletics last year was a little challenging, so he did not play. And I think he also had some prize money issue. But yeah, like he was supposed to go to a team. I believe it was Baylor, mm-hmm. yep. but he actually didn't actually play for the team, right? Correct. Okay. So um, he's a, he's twenty, I think, twenty years old. Super young, yeah. Super young. Uh, he came to the U.S. Open to play. Yeah, yeah. So he's a Wilson Blade user. And uh, I mean, I don't know the full details, but looking at his racket up close, looking at it on TV, it does not look like a pro stock. You know, pro stock rackets usually have the glossy paint job. His looks like a retail, kind of that satin finish. Um, And at first I thought by the way he was hitting, it was an 1820, but looks like counting the string pattern, it's a 16 main racket. So I think he's using 
uh, a V7 Blade 1619. And what were you going to say? I was going to say that you reminded me when I was watching him, they kind of kept saying how he was sending his rackets to his coach to get it re-gripped because it was so oh, yeah. humid and yeah. that like he couldn't re-grip him on the changeover and that because he is kind of this newer up and coming player he literally had like a couple rackets like not six not like a whole bag full like Maybe he... three, <laughs> yeah. so that feels very like authentic <laughs> um That's so true. it will it will be curious we need to, to we need to hit him up and get him on team cheetah man i know I'm right um he also was rocking a different brand of apparel which yeah. i yeah i um i can't remember the name of it you if might... i i don't know for certain but someone mentioned to me it's like that uh it's called like uomo uomo mm-hmm. sport mm-hmm. or something yeah. and i didn't reckon i thought the logo was a little different for that brand i was originally introduced to it by a former UCLA player uh, on the internet. He's on the internet. Now he does racket reviews for my tennis HQ. That's Carew. I think he was uh, using that apparel for a while. Cause like their U S headquarters are like in LA somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like an Italian brand, but it's pretty popular in LA. And then like other college players, he has a Slinko uh, partnership endorsement. That's the one logo we for sure see on his racket. So what yeah. what I think it's interesting what Slinko strings he's using though. Yeah, man, he was definitely stupid pun, but he was outlasting his competition for <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, because he uses the Slinko Outlast, the the Slinko Red String, which you know we don't see a ton out there. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I got I have a reel of that string actually by my desk. Uh, good control very predictable. It's one of those like control oriented red polys I was mentioning in the WTA podcast, kind of like polytor fire pro red code, but it's yeah, pretty good tension maintenance, good control, just a round smooth poly. And um, yeah. And he even uses like the Wolf or the uh, Selenko uh, overgrip, the gray one. I think it's called like, I want to say it's like wonder grip or heaven grip. It's one heaven, of the two. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. So yeah. It's the gray names. one. And it's kind of like their dry grip, kind of like their take on like a, a Turner original. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool though. I mean, it looks like he's using a, a, a stock or a retail uh, blade V7 1619. Yeah. 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 It's cool. I'm curious to see if it changes or, you know, what, where he goes from here. Um, okay. Who else? Did I miss any Americans? Well, I'm sure I missed some Americans, but any Americans that we want to highlight their gear, we can go North American and go back to Canada and talk a little bit about Chapo. His racket is always a fun one to talk about. I know it's kind of like one of your favorites to recommend to some players. So what what's Chapo working with? Yeah, he endorses the V-Core 95. Great control-oriented racket. Uh, the retail version, it's a pretty cool racket because it's a 95 control feel type racket, but kind of has the modern twist of some a little bit of easy pop coming from it compared to like maybe some more traditional 95s. And it's not super heavy, so it's it's pretty user friendly as far as the weight and maneuverability goes, but also can be a good platform racket if you want to add weight to it. Um, as far as the one he actually uses, uh, some claim that he uses like uh, one of the original versions, like the V-Core SV95, like when he first came over to Yonex from Wilson. But, you know, the, the rackets have been, all all versions of the V-Core 95 that we've tested have been pretty pretty well liked um, and also used by one of our Team T-Dub boys, uh, Marco Skirone. Yes. Yeah, so really good racket there. Uh, the 1620 pattern is nice, gives you spin, gives you control and feel. And then as, for, as far as string goes, uh, he uses the Polytor Strike which is kind of like Yonex's most like deadest, low powered, ultra control, you know, predictable string. Nice. And I think he was one that was, uh, we were talking about shoes earlier. You know, he was, he tried, I think he was in the Vapor Pro for a little bit, but looks like he's bouncing back and forth between like his Vapor Pro, his Vapor 10 knit and his Vapor 10s or whatever he can get his, whatever he can get his hands on, I think from the older stock. So yeah whatever like yeah I always just wonder if they have a closet or if Nike does I mean I'm sure yeah. Nike does but also I'm always curious about the players because like we've talked to some players and like I just remember a couple years ago um Christian like dug out a pair of like 
old men's vapor nines. And it was like, these are my last ones. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> so I also wonder about players and how yeah. their closets look. <laughs> yeah. One thing I thought, yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of both. I think maybe, you know, Nike might have a reserve for certain players, like maybe bench itch or whatever. Um, but also uh, I think some of those players kind of stock up, you know, keep, keep back stock in case something happens or their ranking drops or they lose a sponsorship. Cause I was, I saw on social media, um, Australian girl, Daria Gavrilova. Mm-hmm. And she's kind of like had some rough patches with injuries and her rankings dropped and kind of struggled over the past few years with injuries. And she was on her social media. She was like, like posting shoes, like I'll sell these to you. And she had like back stock of like old ASIC solution speeds, old gel reses. She even had like old Nike vapor clay shoes and like shoes from like five, 10 years ago. I was like, Oh man, she's like coming out of the woodwork with these. <laughs> and she was like, like, I don't know if it was a joke or, but she was like, posting them in her story like i'll sell these to you dm me for inquiries oh my gosh yeah, well yeah. i know like we even joke or not joke like i'm for sure like one of those people that likes to hold on to things and like memories and all that silliness but i we always not always but we often clean out our kind of like play test gear and i was going through mine and i had an old vapor nine a vapor knit a va- like the u.s open when nike was doing the night shoes remember those black shoes and it was the same for men and women it was a vapor knit and it had the, like the pink around <laughs> anyways yeah 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 so i get all nostalgic too i have so many old pairs of shoes the a6 gel res four like you know I have, I have a brand new well that the, i made they may have been worn once uh gel res fives that i i have stock perfectly they're in my size and i'm like waiting for the the time right to bust those out you know right well and then even it could just be a random thursday where you're like okay these shoes look comfortable i'm gonna wear them even if it's not even for tennis i don't know i like to i should we should do that i oh. We should have throwback days where we wear our old tennis gear, old tennis shoes. Anyways, off topic. Okay. <laughs> Back to it. Um, let's talk about Berrettini. Matteo Berrettini. Um, yeah, let's go there. So he's a head extreme user, has a cool paint job that head did for him just right before the tournament started. Uh, they're calling it the extreme night, it's like the pretty much all black cosmetic with the yellow yellow accents but he's one of those uh extreme users that i mentioned like in the wta podcast i was talking about krychikova um but they use the older uh style of the head extreme which had that really uh round head shape so going back a few generations there but uh yeah uses the extreme and uh for a string he's one that actually uses uh maybe lesser known brand or not quite as popular on tour, but the Signum pro he uses the firestorm. Nice. That is yeah. different. Yeah. There's been a few players over the years that have used Signum pro. The other one that comes to mind was uh, Mikhail Yuzny used a Signum pro for a while. And then uh, one of the other, uh, cause I think Signum pro is a German company. One of the German players, I think one of the Florian Meyer, or one of the, one of the players used a Signum pro, but yeah. Oh, and then also uh, another one that came up in my head is uh, Rindy Liu, Yinsen Liu. He's like the all-time goat on the challenger circuit. I think he has like more challenger titles than anybody of all time. But uh, he was an extreme user, actually an instinct user, extreme cosmetic, and used Signum Pro. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. It all comes full circle. Drop them um, <laughs> I was just saying, oh, that's who maybe I saw Yuzni in someone's player's box. I, I think he's coaching Chapo. Yeah. 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 Yes. He's been working okay. with Chapo for a while now. Yeah. A lot of it's, it's been cool, to, especially on the men's side. A lot of former players are coaching current players. So I've, I've been enjoying that like throwback because Carlos Alcaraz is working with Juan Carlos Ferrero. Oh, the mosquito. Yes. <laughs> yes. So for me, it's like all the players that I grew up um, watching and loving are now coaches. Xavier Malie, Swan Carlos Ferrero. And then who's the guy that's been coaching team for a while? Um, South American player. Nicholas Masu. Masu, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also gold medalist. Yes, he's from Chile. I, fun fact, um, got to watch him. I think he's from Chile, right? 
I uh, got to watch him play U.S. Davis against the U.S. Davis Cup team a couple mm-hmm. years back in the desert, uh, more than a couple years back, like 20 years back. But <laughs> anyways, okay. What about Karatsev? Karatsev, he's another head player, uses the, endorses the head prestige, which a lot of the prestige players, you know, or a lot of the head pro players, period, um, use what they call like the PT57A, which is like the classic pro stock prestige. Go on the message boards, holy grail racket, <laughs> PT57, and in Murray, Austria, and Murray, Tommy Haas, you know, it's a pretty sick racket. You know, that's kind of what the head pro tour 2.0 was kind of emulating even though everybody flipped the lid was like oh the pt 50 7 a is a 60 flex so soft so buttery and the new one so stiff 65 you know i was like come on dude have you even hit the racket it's not even that stiff but i get it everybody wants the holy grail uh anyways karatsev yeah uses a pt 57 a classic prestige and uh uses a white poly which uh i'm only assuming since he's a head player probably head hawk looks nice. like in a full bed but mm-hmm. lots of control there the racket gives a ton of feel and uh, he's a pretty clean ball striker so only a select few players can really use that racket effectively right uh another head player i think we've talked about him before but we'll bring him up yannick sinner sinner yeah sinner's more of a next gen guy using more of a, a next gen frame i say i guess you could say with the 100 square inches so a little bit more forgiving uh, racket there for a more modern style. But uh, he's a speed MP player. Um, like I said earlier, maybe uh, hard to determine which exact generation or pro stock of the speed, but it is the 100 square inch speed frame um, and uses a open pattern 1619. And for string, supposedly the head hawk touch is a full bed. Nice. And I'm just going to keep rolling with the head players. Poprin. <laughs> yeah, Alexi, Alexi Poprin. Mark me if I'm wrong. Is he an Aussie? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So another one, uh, like, uh, even though he's a younger guy, like Karatsev using the Prestige line, probably a PT57A pro stock racket, um, tons of tons of control and feel there. And then I think for strings now, he's using a hybrid. I think he goes gut with Luxalon 4G. He might have been like full 4G at one point, but I think he's a, I think he's a hybrid now. Sasha. Sasha. Sasha, baby. Gravity Pro with uh, Hawk Touch and Gut, I believe, yeah. And it looks like he's actually tried to transition into the Uber 4, unless it's like an Uber 4 Pro stock as far as shoes go. But he was one that was a big advocate, big fan of the Uber 2, which was well, well liked. Um, and yeah, now it looks like he's in the Uber 4. Yes, yes, definitely. And suits his game, it seems, too. Um yeah, be a good fit for him. What? Who else did I? What other players? Oh well, I guess we covered a lot of them. But uh, we did. the one uh, did we? We talked about Holger, huh? We talked about Holger Rune. The oh, we just talked about his IKEA bag, I think. Oh yeah, the, the <laughs> Danish player. You know, <laughs> he's a Danish player like Wozniacki. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he like uh, Alcaraz. Yes, is using the the twenty twenty Pure Aero VS, which. I've actually uh, followed him, Holger, for a few years now. Okay. Um, saw a video of him a few years back as a junior player hitting on an indoor court. And he's he was a pure drive player forever, I think, throughout pretty much all his junior career. And I heard – I saw him hitting balls in an indoor court and was just, like, ripping the ball. I mean, the indoor court makes it sound even louder, but, like, this guy's racket head speed was just ridiculous. I was like, oh, man, this guy's – a huge ball striker. I didn't know if he would pan out on the pro tour like he's doing right now. It's hard to tell. I didn't really follow all of his junior matches, but I just saw him, saw him hitting the ball, was following him. And then now for it to come full circle and be in the U S open pretty crazy. But uh, I think it's a smart move for me, for players that swing that big, like Adele Potro, who uses a pretty control oriented racket, I think it was a smart move to go with a slightly smaller head, a little bit more control from a pure drive standard to a pure aero VS. Yeah. Uh, that was my comment. He reminded me a lot of Del Potro, but like minus the size, like 
dude was just ripping these forehands from all areas of the court. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see him continue to develop because I got, you know, obviously I can be very critical just watching these players, but I'm like, dude, I was so bummed. He kind of emotionally seemed to let go. Um, he was cramping and all that, but he, yeah. even despite that, he was still putting together some insane shots. Really cool. Yeah. Who else? Musetti is Musetti. Should we talk? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> yeah, Musetti. Yeah, Musetti. I think we've mentioned him on a previous one, um, but uh, he's a head player. He actually uses their newest addition to the Extreme Line, the Extreme Tour. Okay, which is a, a nice racket. I think uh, you know it's the more control oriented version. It's a 98 head size versus the typical 100 square inch from the Extreme Line. A little bit thinner beam, a little more control little more feel, but still gives you that pop and that spin. So it's kind of like a similar racket for head as the Babolat Pure Aero VS. Um, very, very similar comparable frames. Nice. But uh, yeah. And then as far as string goes, he uses, he's one of those uh, young guys that uses a poly poly hybrid. Nice. He goes like Lynx Tour with Hawk Rough, I think. Oh, I like that. That sounds like a good one, a good combo. It's kind of cool too, because we're like in September and like US Open's about to end. And for, you know, most of the year or m- most normal years, quote unquote normal, uh, we're like, oh, dang it. Like tennis is about to be over for the year, kind of, you know, world tour finals and all that. But all the, all the indoor stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But like now it's like BMP is just a couple of weeks away and world team tennis will be after that. So it does feel like a bit of an extended season this year. Um, and kind of something fun to look forward to as the year continues. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably going to be hot too. Done. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it has been fun. I know a lot of us are missing seeing Rafa and Roger. And there were a lot of players actually that did not make the US Open this year for, you know, a hundred different reasons. But it has been a good opportunity for these other players to kind of break out. And I know for me, I, I hear their names often, but I'm I don't really like connect with them as players because I haven't watched them. So I've been able to watch a lot of these players that I've been hearing so much about and really be able to be like, oh yeah, he's going to be fun to keep up with. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of good players coming up, a lot of good variety in the game. It is a bummer, obviously without Rafa, uh, Rafa, Roger or Delpo or Sangha or Stan, you know, but it was good to see players like Nisha Corey back and yeah. putting up a good fight against Novak, you know, yeah. or a lot of these young guys on tour making a, making a scene for themselves. Um, So pretty cool stuff there. Cool. Well, then I think this wraps up this episode. If you guys are interested in checking out, we did one on the WTA players and what a bunch of them are swinging. And uh, as we mentioned in that episode, we have some swag to give away. So if you're you're interested in some strings or tennis bags, um, we've got we got you. So. Uh, do me a favor and go over to iTunes if you are an Apple user and leave us a review on iTunes and shoot us an email from there. And if you live in the US, I will send you something fun and tennis related. And you can just email at podcast.tennis-warehouse.com. We always appreciate you guys listening. And if you ever have any questions on other players that we haven't mentioned or you want to tell us what your setup is, feel free to reach out. We would love to hear it. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Okay. Happy hitting everyone. Go play more tennis. Bye.